Hey, it's Sheila Social Studies. Hey guys, and welcome back to Sheila Social Studies. Today we're going to be covering John Adams, the XYZ affair, and a little bit of the Quasi War. So John Adams, as we remember, was an influential patriot and an important founding father to our young nation. He traveled to France with Benjamin Franklin to try and acquire French aid for the Revolutionary War effort. When George Washington was elected the first president of the United States, John Adams was selected to be the first vice president and loyally served for Washington's two terms in office. During the election of 1796, Adams running as a Federalist narrowly edged the Democratic-Republican Thomas Jefferson to become the second president of the United States. While Washington was able to successfully avoid international conflicts, Adams struggled with foreign affairs. It could be that Washington's choosing to ignore foreign affairs was a direct link to why Adams had such problems with a former ally turned foe, France. In the late 1700s, the final French revolutionary government, the Directory, was experiencing problems financing its European wars. Many leaders were also angry that the United States had concluded with the, uh, the Jay Treaty with Great Britain in 1794. Consequently, in 1796, French leaders decided to issue an order allowing for the seizure of American merchant ships, carefully timed to catch as many as possible by surprise. President John Adams dispatched three U.S. envoys to negotiate a commercial agreement to protect U.S. shipping and restore harmony between the United States and France. These three gentlemen were Elbridge Gerry, Charles Pinckney, and John Marshall. These commissioners, like others of the uh, Adams administration, viewed France as a center of decadence and intrigue, and the rampant intrigue and factions of the Directory made it difficult for the Americans to accomplish their mission. Upon arriving in France, Jerry Pinckney and Marshall found that they were unable to formally meet with the French foreign minister, the Marquis de Talleyrand. The U.S. envoys were instead approached by several intermediaries. Their names, and excuse my pronunciation, I'm not sure if I get them right. Nicholas Hubbard, we're going to later know as W. Jean Hattiger, later known as X. Pierre Bellamy, known as Y. And Lucien uh, Hauteval, known as Z. From now on, we're just going to call them W, X, Y, and Z. Also involved with these negotiations was the playwright, Pierre Beaumarchais, who had been involved in funneling French aid to the United States during the American Revolution. The French intermediaries stated that Talleyrand would be willing to meet with the Americans and come to an agreement if several conditions were to be satisfied. The French demanded that the United States provide France with a low-interest loan of $10 million, assume and pay the American merchant claims against the French, and lastly, pay a substantial bribe of $250,000 to Talleyrand himself. The U.S. envoys were shocked and also skeptical that any concessions would bring about substantial changes in French policy. Now, Talleyrand's strategy was mainly one of delay. He intended to end the attacks on U.S. merchant shipping, but he first wanted to increase his personal wealth, strengthen his political position within the Directory government, and ensure that he would only deal with Elbridge Gerry, the American commissioner who seemed most friendly to French interests. Talleyrand's intermediaries were also interested in preserving peace with the United States, as many of them had interests in U.S. businesses. However, as French military victories in Europe increased, French power increased as well, and the French changed the loan terms and threatened an invasion of the United States if the U.S. envoys didn't capitulate. When the U.S. envoys proved willing to accede to the French demands, Talleyrand eventually met with them formally and dropped most of his requirements, but did not agree to end the seizure of American ships. Pinckney and Marshall made preparations to leave France while Jerry intended to stay in the hopes of averting a war. In the meantime, the, the envoy's dispatches reached the United States, 
President Adams prepared for war and pro-war Federalists pushed Congress to support him. Leaders of the Democratic Party, uh, the Democratic Republican Party, were suspicious of Adams and his motives, and they demanded that he publicly release the diplomatic correspondence describing the negotiations in France. Adams, knowing its contents, obliged them and released the correspondence, but replaced the names of the French intermediaries with the letters W, X, Y, and Z. Thereafter, Adams continued preparations for war, but did not venture to openly declare war. Talleyrand, realizing his blunder, attempted to restore relations, and Congress approved a commission to negotiate an agreement with the French government. In the meantime, the U.S. Navy began to fight the French in the Caribbean while offering support to Toussaint Louverture in Haiti. In 1799, Congress also passed the Logan Act in response to the visit of a pacifist Quaker, George Logan, who conducted negotiations with Talleyrand as a private citizen and returned to the United States announcing Talleyrand's peaceful intentions. The Logan Act criminalized unauthorized diplomatic negotiations. In the meantime, peace negotiations proceeded in France. Napoleon had come to power and was seeking to uh, reobtain Louisiana from Spain. Consequently, Talleyrand, who remained as foreign minister, wanted to prevent further hostilities with the United States. For their part, the British had delighted in the anti-French uproar in the United States and moved to assist the Americans against the common foe, revolutionary France. However, President Adams ultimately wanted to avoid a major war, confident that had France wanted war, it would have responded to American attacks on French ships. Talleyrand feared that uh, limited hostilities with the United States might escalate into a full-scale war and let it be known that he would not accept a new diplomatic representative. Adams nominated a new representative to France despite public and Federalist disappointment that there would be no war but conceded to Federalist demands and expanded the single nomination into a commission of three. The XYZ affair was a diplomatic incident between France and the United States and their, diplomats, uh, and their diplomats that resulted in a limited, undeclared naval warfare known as the Quasi-War. The negotiators chose to annul the 1778 Treaty uh, of Alliance and instead negotiated a new agreement based on the 1776 Model Treaty. This resulted in the Convention of 1800. Since the new agreement made no provisions for compensation for the seizure of U.S. merchant ships, the Senate did not ratify a finalized version until, uh, of the treaty until December 18, 1801. The Convention of 1800 terminated the only formal treaty of alliance of the United States. It would nearly be a century and a half before the United States entered into another formal alliance. I'll see you next time.